test the microphone. <laughs> uh, welcome to those of you who are here today. Well done for booking in and all the rest of it. Um, welcome to those who are joining us online live. And we include also, I understand, someone from Manchester who regularly watches. Um, and those um, friends of yours in your link parish in the High Veld. So welcome across the world. And I'm definitely having a world week because on Monday I did a funeral where the next of kin was in Australia. So I was streamed to Australia on Monday. <laughs> and I, Sunday I'm at South Africa, star of stage and screen. All of you here, I suspect, know me. Nuts, yeah, no. Um, Can and Jenny Mole, retired, working hard. <laughs> um, out most Sundays now that we're out of lockdown. Um, and somebody actually um, that I was working with a funeral and what have you has actually given me a nickname and I'm now called Rentavik. <laughs> she said, you're always doing something for somebody. And I go, yeah. She goes, rent a big, I went, okay. So there we are. So let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, make us mindful of your presence at this time of worship, that we may draw near to you with holy and humble hearts and offer prayers and praises acceptable in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now hand over to Chris Perkis to sing us our hymn. <laughs>
So we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Moment of quiet, we, as we are still before God, so we bring to mind those things that we may have done or thought or said that have hurt others. We think of those good things that we fail to do as we prepare to ask God to have mercy on us. Together we confess. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, the Lord is compassion 
and love. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. The Lord is compassion and love. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. The Lord is compassion and love. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord is merciful towards those who fear him. The Lord is compassion and love. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day Observe it in honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to, to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. Alleluia. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? as many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. 
But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owned him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until, until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today starts with a question. What if Joseph bears a grudge against us? And it's a really good introduction to all the other readings that are talking about forgiveness. And today is Racial Justice Sunday. We didn't choose to have it. I find it quite sad that in 2020 we still have to have it. Um, and it says a lot about the world in which we live, that there is not racial justice. So it's good that the church can remember it at least once a year. And I suppose we all know that the unnecessary and brutal way in which white police officers in Minnesota detained George, George Floyd on the 25th of May has had repercussions across the world. Those eight minutes and 46 seconds cost George Floyd his life and have the potential I believe, to change the world. Taking a knee is now a universally accepted phrase and is practically used before football, cricket and other sports matches, before Formula One Grand Prix races start and at demonstrations for the Black Lives Matter group. Watching the news on television in the days and weeks following George Floyd's death, I was appalled at the way that younger and sometimes older people, ignoring COVID-19 restrictions, were meeting in huge numbers in demonstrations to protest against the events of 25th of May and the way that they saw black people were treated. But on the other hand, I admire them for their conviction. And I can try and understand the frustration and disrespect which black people suffer even in 2020. Color of skin really should not be an issue in this day and age. I'm watching the television in the last couple of days on the news. It now seems America is ready to press, if not already pressed, the self-destruct button. Gun sales have gone through the roof and armed militia gangs are roaming the streets of towns and cities. So maybe in the whole history of the world, there's never been a better time to honor Racial Justice Sunday than this year. 
And even if we feel all that's happening is a long way from us and has little to do with us, I still be, believe that we have to ask ourselves as Christians, what do we think about the way George Floyd and subsequently others have been detained? What do we think about the Black Lives Matter movement? And what can we do to stand up against the injustices against people because of the colour of their skin, their race or their religion? The dictionary definition of justice is fairness or just conduct. Now it's probably true to say that here in Killian the issue of skin colour is no big deal. But I can remember back 37 years ago when I came face to face with about 800 people with a different skin colour to mine. I was in training for the ministry and it was my turn to go to take morning assembly at Golden Hillock School, Spark Hill, Birmingham. If you know anything about Birmingham, you know that Spark Hill is possibly, I can see somebody laughing, it's not the place to go. I had been briefed about it. Thankfully, the college did brief us before we went out on these things. But it still came as a shock to me to be confronted by all those coloured faces and only about five white ones in that assembly hall. And I knew, because I'd read the information beforehand, that in front of me were pupils who spoke dozens of different languages, who came from many different backgrounds, and who with their families followed many different religions. And here was me, a church in Wales Ordinand, in there taking an assembly which would not offend them but would also not compromise me as a Christian. Yes, I had to choose my words carefully, especially in the prayers. An ending through Jesus Christ our Lord was definitely not allowed. But yes, I could talk about God. I could use the word God in prayers. And I could also say that as a Christian, I believe whatever. I have to admit that I can't remember the theme of my service that day in the assembly, but I do remember the way that the children listened intently. After the assembly, I was taken on a tour of the school by the head teacher, a guy who said, oh, from Newport, are you? Rodney Parade. That was the last thing I expected in that school. And he'd lived in Newport for some of his life. We went down silent, empty corridors. And we stopped and looked through windows into classrooms where the pupils were there in their classes. There was no raised voices from teachers. There was no fidgeting from pupils. No one was gazing out of a window with a faraway look. I was, I'll be honest, amazed and intrigued. What discipline! Back in the head teacher's office, at the end of the tour, we chatted. I commented on the wonderful discipline and the tangible learning atmosphere which I'd witnessed in the classrooms. The head smiled at me and said, do you know why? I didn't. He then explained to me that the pupils were appreciative of being able to come to school to learn and that education up to the age of 18 was free. He admitted that because of language problems, fifth form as it was then, year 11 as it is now, those pupils often came back 
and did that year again, repeating their GCSEs and O-levels. But in that year, making huge strides, improving their confidence, their understanding of what exams and things entailed, and improving their grades. He then told me, which really did shock me, and it shouldn't have, that in most academic years, there were one or two pupils who did well enough in their A-levels to go to Oxford and Cambridge. I came out of Golden Hill at school, Spark Hill, with a very, very different picture to when I'd gone in. And I was impressed with it all. But the biggest impression was the respect that everyone in that school had for each other, no matter what their colour, creed or culture. If there was any place where racial justice was being carried out, it was in that school at that time. It truly was amazing. A few years later, I was on holiday in South Africa. In a crowded restaurant in Cape Town's harbour area, I was ashamed to have white skin. Because I was made aware of the disrespectful way in which white South Africans were treating the coloured ones. Going as far as to say, the two people on the table next to where my friend and I were sitting, Oh, you just want to get up and go out if they haven't given you the bill. They don't deserve anything. I wanted to crawl under the table and say, I'm not white. I was just shocked. But I guess that those of our friends from South Africa, in the high belts, who are joining us today, know that that is the reality of their world. And I suspect, like me, your hearts can be broken with the way that people treat each other. And so what can we do? I believe that the best thing that we can do is to pray earnestly that, with God's help, we can all be part of a healing process which will bring justice and respect to all people, no matter their race the colour of their skin, or their beliefs. But of course, memories live long, especially those which have a profound effect on us. That's why I can remember those couple of incidents. And that is also borne out with the demonstrations in Bristol, Oxford, Poole, and other places where there are, or should I say, where there were, statues of those involved with the slave trade. And two of today's Bible readings point to us vividly towards the theme of forgiveness. And from what is going on across the world at the moment, it would appear that forgiveness is a quality in short supply. Of course, when we someone hurts us, we're annoyed, if not angry. But can we find it in our hearts to forgive them? That was Joseph's brother's worry. What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us? Dad is dead, he can't stick up for us. But they needn't have worried. Joseph didn't. Why? Because he saw that God had turned around a bad situation and made it into something good. I just wonder if we can see things like that. Can we trust God enough to put all things into his hands and then respond positively to his guiding us in our lives? In the Gospel reading, we heard of Peter trying to be quite self-righteous by suggesting he could forgive seven times if someone wronged him. I just wonder what his face looked like when Jesus said, no, not seven times, 70 times seven. And if you can keep count after 490, you're doing well. 
What was Jesus saying to Peter? Go away, forgive, don't bear grudges. But of course that's all easier said than done. We're human and we don't like to be hurt and there will be times when we'll find it hard to forgive or forget. I always find it incredibly moving when I hear families of those who've died because of brutality or other human force saying that they forgive the perpetrators of the crimes. To do that takes an enormous amount of faith and love. The faith and love which can only come from God. I'd like to close with some words from a hymn written by Rosamond Herklotz. And I'm going to use phrases of the same hymn in the intercessions. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart that broods on wrongs and will not let old bitterness depart? Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace. And maybe those are the only words we really need to use in our prayers as we reflect on our lives on the lives of those around us and on the lives of all in the world today. And then maybe, just maybe, one of these years we won't need to have a racial justice Sunday. Amen. Now we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Help us, Lord, to have open hearts and minds which will generate forgiveness in its deepest sense. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. 
Help us to be open to your grace working in and through us that in humility we may do your will and live according to your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear up. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart? Lord, help us to trust you enough to mould our hearts to be forgiving and accepting of differences we meet in everyday life. Lord, in your mercy, hear up. Lord, help us also to put behind us and to dismiss from our minds the times we have been wronged in the past and any bitterness we may be feeling because of those times. Lord, in your mercy, hear up. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. God, open our hearts that we may receive your unconditional love, that love which is the only way for us to forgive and forget the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear up. Then, Lord, may our lives spread your peace. Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Bind us all in your love. Show us how we may work together to make your world a better place and give us respect for all people so that we may spread your peace to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, on this Racial Justice Sunday, help us to forgive the wrongs of the past and not bear grudges against people, and to move on in hope for the future, and to take a knee in sincere prayer that God will, God's will of peace for all the world may one day become a reality. Lord, in your mercy, hear up. Have a moment of silent prayer while we bring to God those for whom we are concerned today. The sick, the lonely, the injured, the bereaved, the refugees, the addicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you draw us, emptied of pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our but here, Lord, at your table, invigorate and nourish us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine, your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. Christ, the Prince of Peace, breaks down the walls that divide us. God has called us to live in peace. As well as the words, I'm going to do the piece in sign language, which you can share as well if you wish. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And
celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. Take this bread. We take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal word. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord my God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. It is he who is he the in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Will Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins, the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. <laughs> Oh, bless her heart, she's back there now, Chris. Oh, I might be Lyndon.
thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and in one, one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love, those you have loved, and those you will love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.